I want to talk now about, well, I guess I'll call it the reconversion of Glenn Lowry. So Glenn Lowry was a, a liberal who saw the light in the 1980s and became a neoconservative or a conservative. He was one of the leading black conservatives, along with Thomas Sowell, uh, in the United States, uh, and was, in fact, kind of a mentor um, of mine and of many others. Many of us who are from the younger generation looked up to people like Sowell and like Lowry. And then Glenn Lowry broke with the conservative movement. In fact, his reason for doing it had something to do with me, as I'll explain in a moment. He uh, quit the American Enterprise Institute over my book called The End of Racism, published in 1999, uh, he developed, well, you could only call it an Ahab-like hatred uh, of that book. He wrote, I think, five book reviews denouncing it in all different places. And so he was on a maniacal quest to overthrow my book. And it was really puzzling to me because most of what I said in that book, Glenn Lowry, at least the Glenn Lowry I knew, would have agreed with. And not only that, but I had sent Glenn Lowry the book before it came out and never received a word of, of um, criticism or dissent. And now she shouldn't do this. None of that. This was a complete surprise. And Glenn Lowry took with him to leave, to quit AEI, a sidekick, a fellow named Bob Woodson, a pretty good guy, by the way. Bob Woodson has been someone who helps blacks to, you know, um, balance their checking accounts and build homes. He's kind of a self-help guy. And I realized later when I did a debate with Bob Woodson that uh, he basically only did it because of Lowry, because we were talking about issues in my book. And I realized he didn't have a clue about what I would, had even written about. And so um, uh, Woodson was really not the issue. He was a sycophantic devotee of Glenn Lowry. Glenn Lowry was the guy who was doing this kind of very public break. And by the way, of course, Glenn Lowry got all these accolades on the left. He got uh, prominent teaching positions at Harvard, at Boston uh, University. Uh, and so he became a sort of cause celeb on the left. Now, what's interesting about all this uh, fast forwarding, by the way, at that time, I was very relieved that Thomas Sowell, who was, if anything, the preeminent black conservative scholar, came to my defense and said basically that not only is Dinesh's book fine, not only is it not, you know, insensitive or racist, but it is the most comprehensive and searching look at the race issue since Gunnar Murdahl's classic work called An American a dilemma. Now, um, uh, all of this has sort of come back uh, now because Glenn Lowry recently did an interview. I saw some clips of it on social media. In fact, he put it out himself. He's talking to another uh, black conservative named John McWhorter of the uh, Manhattan Institute. And Glenn Lowry basically says, well, you know what? Uh, let's go back to the days of when I broke with uh, the conservatives. Now, he doesn't mention my book in particular, but what he implies is he said, you know, I kind of knew it was a, an opportunistic move. I kind of knew that if I did that, I would get major accolades from the left. The liberals would love it. They would welcome me home. I would become essentially um, uh, okay once again. Now, it's important to realize a little bit of a backdrop of all this, which is that Glenn Lowry, for reasons unknown to me and, and, and of no uh, relevance to me directly, Glenn Lowry got into a whole bunch of destructive behaviors. Uh, he got into drugs. Um, he became sort of an addict. I guess he it fired up his temper. At one point, he was accused of flinging a woman he was involved with down the stairs. Um, by the way, I'm not speaking out of turn here. Glenn Lowry has himself talked about these things. But I think Glenn Lowry realized that if a black conservative does this, they are going to be crucified by the left. And so his point was, what if I, what if I orchestrate a strategic break with the right? Then the left will go to bat for me. Then they will cover for me. Then my drugs, they won't, won't matter. Uh, threw some woman down the stairs. Who cares? Um, this guy's now come over to our side. We got to protect him. Glenn Lowry knew that. And this, what I'm getting at here is that Glenn Lowry is bringing all this up now to show that, you know what, at the end of it all, after spending, you know, a good 15 or 20 years on the left now, it's too much for me. I can't stand it. It's like a frog in my throat. I got to spit it out. And so to be authentic, you know, he goes, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I've got to come out again as a conservative. So he's having moved from the left to the right and then moving, having moved back to the left, basically from 1995 to now, he's now kind of, quote, coming out as a conservative again. But I think what I find particularly, you know, tragic is this guy is just a sly self, uh, an opportunist. He even admits it. 
He admits that his reason was not uh, honest. It was not really intellectual. It was not ultimately a principled break. It was a cunning move that he made to advance his career, and it did advance his career. So where does that leave us? I mean, I think Len Lowry's instincts are conservative, and I, you know, I'm glad he's back, if you will, with the team. But who can trust this guy? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm willing to sort of forgive and forget, and I rarely mention these matters. In fact, I'm bringing them up after so many years. I had to kind of almost go, go into the storehouse of my memory to call them back up. But I'm only mentioning them because, you know, hey, I, you know, I'm happy to forgive and forget, and I'm sure. I mean, I'd be happy to have Glenn Lowry over to, for dinner, but if we do have him over, we're going to be sure to count our spoons.